let's talk about negation of a statement. See, try to recall, just like corresponding to any matrix A, there existed its transpose matrix called A transpose. Similarly, just like corresponding to any complex number Z, there existed its conjugate complex number denoted by Z bar. Similarly, corresponding to any statement P, there exists its negation P denoted by tilde P. Whatever is the assertion made by the statement P, negation P is the denial of that assertion. That's it. Okay, so for example, P says 7 is greater than 9. Negation P will deny this assertion. It will say 7 is not greater than 9, which is same as 7 is less than or equal to 9. Do you get it? If P says Ram is in class, or I should say Ram is not in class 10th, P is saying Ram is not in class 10th, then negation P will deny this. What will it say? That Ram is in fact is in class 10th. Now there are many ways of writing the negation of a statement. Let's understand that. For example, if I give you P to be representing the statement New Delhi is a city, then negation P will be what? An assertive sentence which will deny the fact that New Delhi is a city. Okay, and that you can write in multiple fashions. You can either say New Delhi is not a city. That is going to represent negation P. Or you can say it is not the case that New Delhi is a city. This is again denial of P only. So this can also be written as negation P. Or you can write it as it is false that New Delhi is a city. Okay, this also can work for negation P. All you need to keep in mind is, whatever the, is the assertion that P is making, deny that assertion, that is going to be negation P. Okay, now if I ask you, how will the truth values of a statement and its negation be connected? It's very, very obvious, very simple. Because denial of P is negation P, that means if P is true, Negation P will be false and if P is false, negation P will be true. So if P is valid, negation P will be invalid. And if P is invalid, negation P will be obviously valid. Right? Got it? In fact, again, a trick of the trade I'm going to share with you right now. If you treat P as the set A, then negation P is nothing but a complement. Yes. So when I say x is in A, this obviously means x is not in A complement, right? A complement is everything outside A. So if x is sitting inside A, that means it is not a part of A complement. Similarly, if x is sitting in A complement, this means it is not in A. Now interpret this in terms of statements. What would this mean? This would simply mean that, wait a second, yeah. If P is true, then negation P will be false, isn't it? X belongs to A means P is true. X doesn't belong to A complement means negation P is false because A complement is equivalent to negation P. Similarly, what does this statement imply? X belongs to A complement. That means negation P is true. This would mean x doesn't belong to a, that means p is false. Fine, okay. In fact, a very obvious deduction is negation of negation of a statement is the statement itself. That means negation of negation of p is same as p. Is it difficult to justify? Not at all. See, if p says 7 is greater than 9, Negation P will say 7 is not greater than 9. And negation of negation P will negate this statement that 7 is not greater than 9. That means it will again say what? That 7 is yes greater than 9. If you do not understand it even this way, you can again connect it with set theory. See, P is my set A. So negation P is A complement. Negation of negation P will be Complement of A complement, which you all know is A, which is nothing but P. 
Okay, so negation of negation of P is same as P. Cool? Sorted. Okay, so we just saw that with respect to any statement, you can compute its negation statement. Right, that means with respect to compound statements also, I should be able to compute their negation statements. Isn't it? So let's talk about their negation statements. All right. First of all, I am interested in computing the negation of a conjunction statement. So what do I have? I have P and Q. That is your conjunction statement. I am interested in negating it. Connect this with set theory. And trust me, understanding this will be a child's play. P is A, Q is B, right? And means intersection, negation means complement. This expression, of course, might be looking familiar to you. We have studied the De Morgan's law, which says A intersection B whole complement is A complement union B complement, right? Now, you just have to interpret this in terms of statements. A complement is what? A was P. So, A complement will be negation P. B complement will be negation Q. Union, you know, is nothing but disjunction or. So, bingo. The first result is here. Negation of P conjunction Q is negation P disjunction negation Q. All right. Similarly, next I am interested in negation of a disjunction. Okay. So, disjunction means P or Q. I want to negate it. Again, this is nothing but A union B whole complement, which again by De Morgan's law is A complement intersection B complement. A complement is negation P. B complement is negation Q. And intersection means conjunction and. So, what are you getting? That negation of P disjunction Q is negation P conjunction negation Q. Okay? If this is not sounding convincing to you, then I have a full proof, explicit mathematical proof in order to convince you. Let me convince you upon uh, the negation of disjunction. And the exact same proof you can replicate to justify yourself the negation of conjunction. Okay? So, this I am not talking about right now. I will be just focusing upon negation of disjunction. I will prove to you through this truth table that the left-hand side statement and the right-hand side statement, they are equivalent. Because the truth values in each scenario are going to coincide. They are going to replicate. They will be photocopy of each other. So, let's start. First of all, beginning with the basics, P and Q. In order to fill these columns, just recall, you have two coins, you're flipping them, what do you get? Head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. Similarly, in here you get true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. First two columns filled, end of the story. Now start using your brain. Next, you want P or Q. We are trying to create the left-hand side statement first, okay? So, P is there, Q is there. Now, I want P or Q. That's the first agenda. So, I know that disjunction of P and Q is false only when both are false. Otherwise, in every other scenario, it is true. So, cool. It's false only when both are false. Otherwise, in every other case, it is true. Cool. I used my mind. I filled this column. Next, what do I need? This much part I have obtained, now I need its negation. Right. So, negation will be what? If P wedge Q is true, negation of P wedge Q will be false. If this is true, this will be false. Here true, here false, here false, here true. Right. So, filling the negation column is super duper simple. So, this is my left hand side statement. I have obtained its truth values corresponding to each scenario. Now, let's build the right-hand side. Right-hand side is negation P and negation Q. So, first I need negation P. So, P I have. Here P is true. So, here negation P will be false. Here P is true. Negation P will be false. Corresponding to false P, I will have true negation P. Corresponding to false P, I will again have true negation P. So, I have obtained the truth values of negation P corresponding to the truth values of P. 
Next, what do I need? This I have obtained. Now I need negation Q. So Q true means negation Q false. Q false means negation Q true. Q true means negation Q false. Q false means negation Q true. All right. So this much is also done. Now I have this part. I have this part. I just need their conjunction. And conjunction of two statements is true if and only if both are true. Otherwise, in every other scenario, it is false. So you can see both are true here. So their conjunction will be true here. Otherwise, in every other scenario, at least one of them is false. So the final outcome of the conjunction will also be false. Okay, so this is the truth values of my RHS statement. And now you can clearly just look. False, 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 true, true. What I mean is, when P and Q both are true, then both these statements are giving the same validity. They both are actually invalid. When P is true, Q is false, then again, both are invalid together. When P is false, Q is true, both are invalid together. When P is false and Q is false, both are valid together. That means corresponding to every scenario, every situation, the truth values are coming out to be exactly the same and hence both my LHS and RHS statements are equivalent statements. Using the exact same drill, you can convince yourself by proving the negation of conjunction as well. Okay?